Good evening and welcome to the uh, December 29th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Town of Cape Elizabeth. And we welcome all of you and uh, we're a week late because of the holiday and appreciate your sticking with us while we sorted through the uh, tabled matters. We have basically two projects to deal with on tonight's agenda. Uh, one of them will take two different uh, agenda items and some internal business, which you're welcome to stay and, and listen to, but uh, does not involve direct uh, appeals or variances or anything of that sort. Um, with, let's start with the approval of the minutes of November 24th. Uh, anyone see any corrections or additions necessary to? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Hunt. On the last page, not a terrible big deal, page four, third paragraph, next to the last line, it's just repetitious here. Uh, uh, one of the and make it needs to be taken out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, not recorded in the minutes, and I, I think can be handled by perhaps a discussion after we get started on item one. We did have a bit of a discussion concerning uh, the uh, uh, board members who are uh, parishioners at St. Bartholomew's, and uh, I think that should probably come up again for a discussion and review so that's reflected in the minutes. It will, trust okay. me. Okay, because it, <laughs> yeah, well, it, it implied in uh, the, uh, Mike Hill's letter that that we had already discussed it, which we did a little bit, but it wasn't recorded and needs to be reviewed. In fact, uh, Mike's letter implies that we had made a decision about it, and that's, that's not, correct. not accurate. All so. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't overlooked. Okay. With uh, the one change and the uh, addition, I guess we better include it in that discussion around St. Bartholomew's Church that the board uh, did discuss the question of two members uh, who are members of that church and uh, asked about how to deal with that issue when it came up. Uh, the result was that a letter was sent to the town attorney, Mike Hill, and his response is in the packet for tonight and will be dealt with in a minute. Um, okay? Good. Any other changes or additions that people want to make to these minutes? If not, all those in favor of their approval and inclusion in the record? Any opposed? See none. They are. Um, Next item of business is uh, under old business, which is in fact the St. Bartholomew's uh, Roman Catholic Church. And uh, that item was on our agenda at the last meeting, as I just indicated. Uh, and we tabled it at the request of the applicant because of some additional material they wanted to provide. And uh, it's back before us again tonight. The packet contains the material including a letter and so on. I do want to ask before we get into that, uh, back on December 2nd, the members were sent a letter signed by Pastor Henschel about a public meeting uh, being held on December 10th. Uh, did anyone go to that meeting? Good, well, and for future reference, don't do that again. <laughs> it's not appropriate to invite members of this board or the planning board to that kind of a meeting. Uh, and so we didn't create any conflicts in that regard. Uh, secondly, the question of the conflict that I referred to a minute ago was raised by the two board members and uh, I gave them my advice. We decided to pursue it further and get a letter from uh, Mike Hill, our attorney. And uh, even though the letter is slightly inaccurate in terms of what he thought we had done at the last meeting, uh, he does deal with two separate issues. Uh, the one that we talked about at the last meeting was the conflict of interest question and uh, essentially confirmed what we had concluded at that last meeting. But secondly, he raises the issue of uh, any appearance of bias, which is a separate issue. And 
I guess at this stage in the game, I would turn to the board members who raised the question in the first place and see what it is they would like to do. Mr. Chairman, I'll go first. Uh, I don't think there's any possibility of bias or impartiality. Uh, as a parishioner, my concern was uh, as someone who had uh, made a donation to the uh, project, my donation was considerably small portion of the total amounts raised. Um, Too bad. <laughs> uh, did my best. Um, <laughs> But uh, having read Mike's letter, I don't think that uh, I'm confident I can deal with this without prejudice and completely impartially. Okay, thank you. Joe? You, know, you, feel, the, you feel the same? I'm in the same position as, as Tom. Okay. Uh, I would then ask uh, uh, the remainder of the board members, is there any uh, reason in your mind to uh, pursue this matter further? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would then turn to the applicant, and this matter is open for discussion. Good evening. My name is Dennis Lemieux. I'm an architect with Harriman Associates. With me also this evening is uh, Father Michael Henshaw, pastor of St. Bartholomew, and Andy DeHay, uh, an, an associate with Harriman Associates, whose emphasis is in landscape architecture. What I would like to do tonight is just give a brief overview of the history and the process of, that we've used so far for the proposed project. Um, I have a brief report on the December 10th public meeting, we, which we, was held at St. Bartholomew uh, for the uh, immediate abutters, and um, summarize and validate that, in our opinion, we meet uh, the conditions for an approval, and then have an open discussion and to answer any specific questions that you may have. You may have to bring it. Can you see it from there, John? I'm the TV cameras. Well, unfortunately, if the TV camera can see it, you may not be able to. So that, that looks pretty good. What I was trying to do is uh, have two diagrams at one at the same time, trying to show the existing conditions and the proposed conditions to make it easier for us to be able to uh, look at. Speak up, Mr. Oden. What is it you want? Pardon me? <laughs> can't, see can't see it. You can't see this one. Uh, that's all right. Leave that one alone, and there you go. Pull this one around, if you would. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Thank you. The, um, the property was bought by the Roman Catholic Diocese of Portland back in 1964, and the parish was commissioned by Bishop Gary in 1968. And in 1971, the current church building was dedicated. Um, and St. Bartholomew has grown from its initial 500 families to the current seven, approximately 750 registered families. Based on a recent demographic study that we've completed, the parish is not expected to grow significantly in the future. And the average age of the parishioner is expected to get older. The design parameters for the proposed projects were based around these projections and demographic studies. In 1996, the parish undertook a preliminary assessment of the existing physical conditions to determine and to itemize required maintenance issues and repairs of the facility. They also examined their existing programs and evaluated their parish needs. The results of this project indicated that in order to improve the program needs of the parish, the following alterations uh, should be made or be considered. One was a permanent worship space. Another was a dedicated area for meeting rooms, consolidation of the parish offices, uh, and a more functional fellowship hall. 
Currently, the uh, social and educational activities occur in an open, off, an open worship space requiring constant setup and rearrangements of furniture. It is also very difficult for more than two small groups to meet simultaneously in this wide open structure. There's lack of, of uh, privacy in terms of having two or three small groups meeting. The basic scope of the design is to consolidate and to provide dedicated spaces for these individual religious, social, and educational programs. Currently, the uh, facility, this plan in, uh, identifies the current facility as far as the site plan is concerned. The existing rectory and worship space and existing parking. And parking currently is for approximately 132 vehicles. The proposed project would have an addition of 6,100 square foot addition of a new fellowship hall. And we would uh, increase the parking to uh, accommodate 158 spaces. Plan-wise, the current floor plan, maybe what I could do is just leave that a little lower. Mr. Lemieux? Yes. Let me just point out that we're, we're on television and we're recording this as well, so we need you to be near a microphone whenever you're speaking. When you talk into the board, it doesn't uh, give a good chance of coming through. Used to being on TV. All right, neither are we. This is our second time. <laughs> Let me just note for your convenience there's also a hanging mic right over top of your chart there. Okay. So that between the two, you can probably be heard. If you just there you go. facility is basically one open worship area that can accommodate uh, 850 seats. And we the existing uh, facility also has uh, public facilities for toilets and the kitchen and currently has a couple offices located within the worship area. And currently in the rectory, we have a parish office and the pastor's office. What we're proposing to do uh, is relocate a lot, all these facilities. Uh, the rectory will become a private space for the pastor and not be used as a public space for parish offices. And we'll relocate the parish office secretary here and the pastor's office here and leave that area for private use. The uh, other existing offices would be relocated in this area here. We have two offices there and we're relocating here. So we're not adding any additional office staff uh, to the project. We will be subdividing the existing open area into a permanent worship space, uh, reducing the amount of occupants from 850 down to 500 with permanent seating and queues. And allocate the re remainder of the space into smaller meeting areas uh, for the use of uh, educational purposes. And in order to be able to have a social activity, we're introducing a parish hall and relocating the bathrooms into this area and relocating the kitchen in that area. So all the existing spaces that we have are being relocated. We're not introducing any additional uh, spaces to the facility. Uh, we are increasing and making better use of this area for the narthex and changing the entrance to the facility. Currently, there's two doors leading into the, the worship area, which makes it very difficult for the parish priest to be able to welcome everyone because he can't be at two doors at the same time. And I think a lot of people that come in this side of doors and this see or are able to uh, communicate with the people coming in that side of doors. So this is going to help uh, in, in terms of social programs. <coughs> um, 
<coughs> On December 10th, we invited the Abutters to uh, a public meeting, and um, what we heard of, uh, was a couple of concerns. Uh, one of the concerns was that on occasions, there's some par parking on, on the street, and some people are parking uh, in such a way that they're disturbing the lawns. Um, what we propose to do with this addition is add additional parking to hopefully alleviate uh, parking on, from the street. But there are still occasions like Christmas, Easter, or large weddings or funeral, which, you know, maybe more than 130 cars will be there. But the parish has made uh, arrangements with the local police department to, to assist them uh, in directing traffic on those occasions. And I believe that was used just recently for uh, Christmas services. Can I just interrupt you for a second? Because you, you just said 130 cars, and I thought you were talking about 150 some. The new one will be 158. Okay. 130 is the existing. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much for correcting me. Um, there was another abutter that shared a concern uh, during the course of uh, the wetlands delineation. He saw a whole bunch of activity occurring in his backyard, and he was thinking there was a lot of development going on. But he felt assured, reassured at that meeting uh, to find out that all that flagging was being done primarily for wetland delineation and had nothing to do with development in his backyard. So I think in general, the abutters who attended that meeting left better informed and were satisfied with the uh, proposed project. Um, in conclusion, though, I would like to say that we believe that the proposed project meets the standards for granting a conditional use. The current facility does not, nor will the proposed addition, create uh, hazards to the traffic condition. The peak traffic demands will continue to be on weekend, weekends for religious services. The current facility does not, nor will the proposed project, create unsanitary conditions for reasons of sanitary disposals or emissions to the air. We currently have the same amount of bathrooms being introduced to, so that we're not increasing the use of uh, sanitary system. Uh, the proposed project will not adversely affect the value, I believe, of the adjacent properties. And the proposed project and site plan um, and site layout are compatible with and in accordance with the comprehensive plan. The design of the external appearance to the facility is in keeping with the existing structure, and the proposed new addition um, actually will be visible primarily from the parking area, not from the public streets. So at this time, I would like to open for any questions you may have, and hopefully the three of us can be able to answer any questions you, that you have. Could you just, uh, I'm trying to figure out from the parking uh, plan that's included with your packet, maybe you could just in a, yeah, on any of these drawings would be helpful, just delineate how the new parking is being added. Is it being added away from the door or to the, to the side? Not quite? Okay. This that helped. Here, that shaded, okay. Additional so it's. We're reducing the amount of pavement that's currently in front pushing it down, requiring us to expand it internally. Okay. Uh, did uh, Reverend Henschel intend to speak, or are you just here to answer questions? No, I'll just answer questions. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, Excuse me. Other? Mr. On this parking issue, you're going towards the, the present leach field now. Is that where you're moving the parking area? Now, are you hooking up to the municipal sewer? I saw a reference that you were trying to hook up to the, the uh, municipal sewer. That issue is being brought up to the town council at uh, their upcoming meeting in January. What is, what is the issue? What is the question? Is it there? Is it nearby? The existing uh, sewer, the existing sewer ends right here. And what we're proposing to do is City Council is, is looking at doing is extending the line to this area and then we would connect to it. So there's 
There's a proposal that's being brought up to the town council for their consideration. We don't know what, what they're But either way, you're going to hook up to the sewer. That's one of the alternatives we're looking at. No. Either way, you're going to hook up to the sewer, yes or no? Because if you don't, then you're going to be parking on top of the leach field. No, we're not parking on top of leach field. Okay, but you're going, to be, you're going to be moving your parking area towards that. This is an issue with me in parking because uh, I've seen it on Christmas, uh, uh, Easter, on a, on a good Sunday. And it's an issue. And uh, you mentioned you're going to be restriping the parking lot. Mm -hmm. But if you had a mass today or tonight or even tomorrow morning, they wouldn't be able to see the, the, uh, the, re the striped area, and it will be a problem. So unless you're going to expand the square footage of the parking lot, I, I've, I've got a problem with it. I've got an issue. I, and if the septic system or the, the leach field is going to limit you an uh, expansion towards that, then, then I'm, uh, <laughs> I'd like to find an alternative way to, to resolve the problem. It's that far away? Yeah. That's the existing location of it. And what we're proposing to do is expand towards it. We could add another road, quite frankly, and still not interfere with the leach field. OK. I'm still not clear of your answer to Mr. Firstasi's original question, which was, are you going to hook up to the sewer, or aren't you? You said there are two ways to do it. Does that mean one or the other is going to be used and you will not continue the leach field? We, are, we have to weigh all the situation in terms of cost. And I don't think that the, the parish has made a decision in terms of abandoning that field or not. We, are, we have recommended that you know, they hmm. consider hooking to it. The concern I have is that the application flat says the leach field will be let go and there will be a sewage uh, treatment facility or uh, attachment. And uh, so I, I want to know on the record, quite frankly, what it is you're going to do okay. because it's either the application or it's your, uh, <coughs> you know, frankly, not clear answer. And uh, I'd like well, to have one or the other on I'm, the record. I'm, I don't want to be evasive because, because I, I'm not sure what, how the council is going to vote. We've been talking with the city planners, and they are in favor of it, but they keep on, you know, they, they remind us that we don't know. Well, tell me what the vote then be. what it is the council is voting on. Are they voting on accepting the capacity, uh, the additional uh, sewage, as well as voting on whether to extend the line or to have you hook it up yourself? The report that was sent to the council today, I have received a copy of, and I have not had the opportunity to read through it. Maybe Bruce is familiar with what that report says and how it's being presented. I'm just asking a question about the, <coughs> the council's legal responsibility. Do they have to vote to accept the additional sewage? I believe this is just outside of the area that, that, that had been designated prior to, to, the, to be able to be serviced at some point. Okay. And I think that's what the council will be looking at. Isn't and whether, they, whether they're going to extend the line down the road for other people to use or, or they're going to allow him to hook up on his own land at that point. Isn't if they're within 150 feet of the existing sewer line, aren't they obligated to connect into it, whereas if they're not, they are? If the building oh. is within. Yes. That's, the, that's yes. the difference, yeah. So it's not? No. Mm -hmm. no. So they're not obligated to do this? But if no. the town wants to extend the sewer line, oh, so if the town wants to extend the sewer line, it still wouldn't matter. They would just do it as a convenience more than... To the, to the church and the church to the town. That, that could be a fair assumption. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Joe. I, I have a, I guess a concern as to what we're, what we're being asked of tonight. Uh, this is going to the planning, uh, planning board where they're probably going to review a lot of these questions. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, should we be asking these questions now, or should we be just voting approval or disapproval of this with an attachment that we have a concern with parking, we have a concern with, with the sewer, and our other concerns, and passing it on to the planning board so they can review it and get some answers? Well, I'm not sure there's an answer to the question of should. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's whatever whoever uh, the board wants to do. We also discussed this last, last meeting and workshop session that we're, we're going to basically 
forego our review of these uh, of these matters in the future and refer well, it to the planning board? And I'm looking yet, at Bruce for, for that's support. That's yet to be decided. At, at this present yeah. present day, uh, you have to look at it as a conditional use approval. And I think you should have some concerns uh, based on number three of the conditional use standards, which is uh, sewer disposal. Yeah. Um, it is it is my belief that, that they've had some studies done on the septic system, and if all else fails, the septic system is in perfectly good shape. And because there's no increase in the amount of seating, uh, but indeed a decrease in the amount of seating, uh, that the use would not be in, in more intense, which means the septic system could fer fer function perfectly well. So they can fall back on that if they're not successful in, in, in hooking up to the sewer. And the additional parking, being as close as it is to the septic system, will have no, no bearing, no effect on it in your professional judgment? No, it will no. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Just while Mr. Lemieux is there, I want to get back to the question that is implicit in, in Bruce's comment. Uh, can, I, can I hear from you as to why you recommended that they go from the septic system to town sewer? I'll let was, Andy Was it related to the question of the quality of the system or? Please. Just introduce yourself on the record. My name is Andy DeHaze. I'm a landscape architect for Harriman Associates. Uh, initially, when we first started uh, the, the concept of this, this uh, project, one of our concerns, one of my concerns was the fact that this septic field had been in place for over 20 years, and I had a little, uh, I had some concerns about uh, just how functional it was at this point in time. Uh, recently, we hired, uh, or the uh, parish hired, a soil scientist, Albert Frick, uh, out of Gorham, to come and look at the field, evaluate the field, to see how much more life it may have. Uh, if it's failed, uh, no one knows until you really dig into it and look into it. And the report just came in a few days ago uh, from Albert Frick saying that the system looked uh, like uh, it's functioning, func functioning very well and still has a lot of life to it. So now that we know this, the, the, the parish council or, or the planning committee will now have to make a decision. Do we continue using this field, seeing that it's still functional, or do we abandon the field and tie into the municipal system? Which at some point <coughs> in, in the future, that may well have to happen. But for the present time, the system seems to be perfectly good. Uh, does, does Mr. Smith have a copy of Al Frick's report that you referred to? No, the, uh, I heard from uh, Mr. Frick by way of phone just the uh, day before Christmas, and uh, he said that there's a report that was going to follow. Thank you, sir. Questions before he sits down? Uh, the, the only question I had, if <coughs> I don't know where the, where the outflow is, does it show? From the, from the church? Oh, it's right there. If it would be while it's under construction to maybe shoot a line to the street for the future. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if we do, uh, if, if it is decided that the septic field will con continue to be used in our own planning, we will provide a stub out, a stub out from uh, the new uh, plumbing. So you're going to do that anyway? to anticipate connecting uh, to the municipal sewer in the future. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board uh, for Mr. Lemieux or uh, Reverend Henschel? You say that the... Uh, Mr. Cronin. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the use will remain a place of worship. Now, uh, it sounds like with your fellowship hall that you're planning collateral activities, and is there a, any constraint on meeting times or uh, hours of meetings, or if you could answer that. Yeah. Since it's a program thing and not a building thing, I can talk about it better than they can. I'm Father Michael Henschel. I'm the pastor of St. Bartholomew's Parish. 
Our expectation at this point is, see, this has been a multi-purpose space, which means that all of the meetings and religious education and everything else has taken place within that same rectangle. We don't expect that there's going to be an increase so much in the number of those things or a change in the schedule of them. But it'll mean not having to rearrange the chairs and putting up artificial petitions and all that kind of things because we'll have existing dedicated space for those things instead. So we don't really expect to see any change, any significant change, in the use or the times of use. But we expect that what will be possible is, is that it'll become a much more efficient space than what it is now. Any other? Okay. Hearing none, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we'll offer an opportunity for anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue, either for or against. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Are we going to get into the wetlands at all? I, I'll, I have to plead a little bit of ignorance with cause for not having completely had a chance to thoroughly review. But uh, is, are there any debates on wetlands, location, adjacencies, and whatnot that... Uh... It's not my understanding that there are, based on what Mr. Lemieux said and, and what I've seen on the paper, but Bruce, do you want to... Uh, is there any concerns? I can tell there's no... There's no uh, this project would not impact the wetlands, and, it, and, and, and um, therefore it should be able to go ahead. Okay. There's certainly no construction that impacts it directly, presuming that they control their runoff during the construction period. Well, when I say impact, I mean by ordinance, it, it's allowed. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Once again, anyone from the public who wishes to speak on the St. Bartholomew Church request? If not, the public hearing is closed, and I'll uh, open it up to the board. Let me. Uh, just first of all, draw your attention to the ordinance on page 48, which is the standards for conditional use approval. Bruce, I don't have a, uh, at least if I do, I haven't seen it, a draft order for this. Yeah, it's auto came in the packet last, uh -huh. last sorry? month. Oh, from last month, except it wasn't? We don't make Okay. Uh, hang on just a minute, I've got mine here. Or at least I did. I'm sure I did. There's the application very fast. Say again. The application. Yes, the oh, standards. standards. Yeah, I have one. I have one. Uh, as Tom points out, there's also a copy. In, in The application itself contains the standards, so that would be helpful. I'm still looking for my order from the last meeting, but I don't have it. Uh, you want mine, Henry? It's all right. It's, it's going to be here somewhere. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> got it? I might be disorganized, but I'm not totally screwed up, so I've got it. Thanks. Yeah. Just had to go to last week's or last month's packet. Uh, anyway, drawing your, your attention to... Uh, page 48 of the ordinance, which has the conditions uh, of approval uh, as well as the standards for approval. And the standards are tracked in the draft order if you have that, and if not, in the questionnaire, that's the application. So let's refer to them. Um, the other point that, that uh, Joe made a little while ago is that uh, we voted recently at the last meeting, in fact, to uh, recommend to the town council that this board be relieved in the upcoming zoning ordinance revisions of conditional use approval for this kind of situation because the planning board has to dissect and approve such applications in much more detail on the very same issues as well as other issues uh, and it seems unfair to applicants and of no particular uh, value to this board either uh, but as Bruce points out the, that has yet to be acted on by the council and the, the new ordinance hasn't been adopted. So for the time being, we are uh, part of this process and we need to deal with it from that perspective. Uh, having said all that, is there a board member who wishes to make a motion? I'll, I'll make a or, motion. Yes. <clears throat> I uh, move that the application of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Portland uh, <clears throat> St. Bartholomew's uh, Church, owner of property at 62 Lights Road, which is in residential A, 
residential A district. Tax map U37, lot 4 and 4A containing 47.5 acres be approved. Uh, there uh, the use uh, is listed as a conditional use in that district. Uh, it's an institution of religious nature, specifically a church. Uh, the conclusions... Uh, Let me just interrupt there, Andrew, yeah, if I ahead. could. And let's, some months ago, we decided, with the help of the town attorney, that we didn't have to read all these things word for word. Okay, I was so, just... Uh, if you're inclined to approve all the standards... Uh, yeah, I was just going to standards. say, in general, uh, the, uh, the, the five conclusions... Uh, have been addressed uh, appropriately and have been met. Um, I think I'll lower my voice. I don't have to go into, there are no conditions of approval that we have to uh, approve, I don't believe. So your motion is to approve, to approve the because the standards listed in the ordinance under section uh, 1955D have been met and yes. uh, those are listed in the draft order. Yeah. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Discussion of the motion. Do we presume that uh, it, it, in as much as they have specifically said they are going to put sewer in, but have hedged on it that there's any problem with that? I find <coughs> none, but uh, should we? Uh, well, I have to be honest with you, that the, that the one thing that concerns me to answer your question, Amory, uh, is, as I was saying a few minutes ago, is that the application says we're going to go to the sewer. Now we understand they may not. In fact, I'm guessing they will not because there's a cost involved. Uh, and we don't have in our, pack, in our uh, information package the report that was referred to because they don't have it yet, apparently. So uh, I, was, I was going to yeah. add that it would be appropriate for the Albert Frick septic system analysis be presented to the code enforcement officer uh, subject to his approval. Uh, if there's a disapproval, this motion is null and void, if that makes sense, because uh, we are uh, kind of accepting a little bit on faith there. Uh, their request for sewer versus septic. Mm -hmm. well, uh, I guess I'll leave it at that. At the, i got to tell you the truth, that makes me a little uncomfortable because I'm not even sure that's legal, but it certainly makes me uncomfortable if it is because it, right. it in effect nullifies the board's action at, at the discretion of the code enforcement officer. I don't think that's okay. appropriate. But let me suggest a way to get at your problem uh, if I understand what you're trying to do, which is uh, something along the lines of attaching a condition which would have to be agreed to by your seconder and then the board, uh, which basically says that the applicant will, uh, number one, provide the Albert Frick report as soon as it's available, and number two, uh, that this approval is conditional upon uh, approved, an approved sewage system being uh, provided for it. And whichever it is, whether it's town sewer or yeah. continuation of the okay. uh, existing system, will be determined by the report ultimately. So, yeah, and if, and ultimately, it'll be up to, to uh, Bruce's judgment as the code enforcement yeah. officer. But at least that won't put our our uh, authority, if you want to call it that, at his disposal. Now, would that would that have to fall under the? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, conditions of approval? Yes, I think so. There's a, there's a number five category yeah, for utility improvements, improvements, and I believe that would come in that category. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Tom. Um, just putting that in, uh, end out, uh, let's say the Frick report comes in and there's a problem with it. Um, would that be considered a change in circumstances so that they could reapply right away as opposed to waiting <coughs> a year? Well, if you, if you, uh, if, Amory agreed to the suggestion that I just made, it wouldn't matter. Because uh, all I was suggesting is that there be a clear condition that that sewage disposal be uh, done in a, in a manner approved by the town through the existing yeah. code enforcement process. And so whether it's in a proper septic system or whether it's hookup to the town 
sewer, it wouldn't matter. It would still be approvable. And if not, it's not going to be approved anyway. So, Would that be that more was, under, under the heading of performance guarantees, though? You're not really demanding utility improvement. You're asking either the maintenance of an adequate system as it is now, uh, but they'd like to connect to the sewer system, but you can't. I think making that a condition, then the whole project turns and falls whether they can connect to the sewer. Yes, if, we say, if we make it a performance guarantee that the septic, that they either connect to the public sewer or maintain an adequate uh, a sewage disposal system uh, as conditions for approval, then I think that that meets your concerns. That, yeah. that to me is much more workable. Yeah. I don't see where that's any different than what we were just talking about, but I certainly don't disagree with it, so I don't have any problem with it. Yeah, I, I would agree the uh, performance guarantee I think makes more sense in that uh, that the either the, uh, the septic system subject to the frick report <coughs> be as acceptable <coughs> as a tie into the uh, municipal sewer system from my point of view here the, the, the effective result of this is not a whole lot because they're going to have to meet that standard anyway well. but it's rather to say to the town council and to the planning board that this board discuss this issue and it has a concern that it be resolved in a proper way. And, uh, and I have no doubt that it will. I think it's worth pointing out that they, reducing their capacity of the church uh, from 850 to or 1,000, depending on which you, which you read, uh, to 500. So uh, that would put less of a strain on it because they are increasing, increasing the cars to 100. And it seems, seems strange reducing the capacity by 350 and increasing the cars by. So but their membership drive in church at that rate. But their membership has gone up 50 yeah. percent. So, no. Yes, they are. No, they are. Yeah. Anyway, the way I saw that is they're reducing the maximum capacity. But on an everyday on an everyday Sunday, it's nowhere near 800 people. It's closer to the 500 or, or so. And Father Henshaw can tell me exactly how many it is. But they're taking a lot of that dead space during. 49 Sundays uh, and, and utilizing it more effectively uh, for uh, year-round usage. I don't know what's going to happen come Christmas when uh, those 350 people are going to be out in the cold. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's what are for. Probably <laughs> put a sound system out there. <laughs> yeah. Driving church. California, here we come. Just get to church early, Joe. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what the regulars do. <laughs> so I understand, Mr. Oden, that you're uh, prepared to um, uh, modify your original motion, uh, and I presume Mr. Cronin would second it, uh, to add a condition under uh, conditions of approval six performance guarantees. Yes. That basically requires <coughs> the applicant to ensure that uh, that the facility is either hooked up to the uh, sewer system or there's assurance that the, the current facilities using a leach field are acceptable or under town to ordinance. Uh, yeah. To sustain the uh, presumed load. Uh, so I have a motion in a second. Uh, is there a discussion now of that motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion uh, with the condition of approval just attached. Anybody opposed? I see none. All board members voting. Thank you, Father. Do you want your architectural plans back? We'll go right into the... We recycled tonight. You may need these. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is uh, to
to hear the appeal of William and Kelly Lewandowski, 11 Wombeck Road, tax map U12, lot 77, for a rear property line variance of 16 feet from the required 30 feet and a right side property line variance of 4 feet from the required 30 feet to add 5 feet by 17 feet 8 inches by 7 feet 19 inches, excuse me, and 7 feet by 19 feet to the existing footprint to replace the existing garage and add a second floor to all as per plan submitted. Uh, this item was on our last agenda, was tabled uh, at the request of the applicant, and uh, as you notice under new business and in your packet there is a new uh, application. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, get this off the table. I assume the applicant's going to withdraw it, and, uh, but I would like just to get us from one to the other with Bruce's help so that you're uh, not any more confused than I was until I talked to him about how we got from one to the other. Uh, so I need a motion to get this off the table. So move. Is there a second? All those in favor of that motion? Now, uh, Mr. Lewandowski, you want to uh, just address the withdrawal question and we'll move on. I did want to withdraw the first application and am um, uh, tonight submitting for discussion the, uh, under new business uh, the second application. Okay. Is there any objection to the applicant's withdrawal? Consider it withdrawn. Uh, I just, you can stand there if you want, Sarah, or sit down for a minute, but I just want to discuss this as a transition matter at first uh, so, so we catch all the board members up to how we got here. Uh, Bruce, you want to lead us down that path? You want to get into what part of it? I just want to explain to the board how we got where we are, and I want to talk about Mike Hill's memo before we get too far in. <coughs> then we can ask... Uh, Mr. Lewandowski to come back up. Based on a um, Class D survey that, that Mr. Lewandowski uh, had performed, uh, he has reconfigured and, 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 and therefore decided to put in a new application for variance. That's how that came about. As far as the, the other situation with the letter that we asked, the board asked me to get from Mike Hill, I think it should be made clear to the record first off that as an oversight from, from me, that question never should have been posed because it was a variance and that was a, a different section entirely. It's a good question. It has been answered and I think it needs to be discussed, but I'm not sure in the context of the applications that, that Mr. Lewandowski has before us tonight that it, that it, that it applies. Because Just stop it there. A variance. Okay. <laughs> Do you understand what, what Bruce is saying, and this is what took me two, two or three rounds on the telephone to get through as a procedural matter, because when I got Mike's letter, I want to know what the hell was going on. Basically what he's saying is that we got off on a path talking about setbacks at, as the primary issue at the last meeting, and then we got into this whole question of enlargement, et cetera, et cetera. And basically Bruce, and he admits that he didn't pick up on it either, frankly. Uh, we all just sort of went down that path and, and forgot that what was really in front of us at the last meeting was a variance request. And uh, therefore, for all intents and purposes, it was an inappropriate discussion from the strictly legal point of view of what was in front of us. Uh, so I'm pointing that out more for information than anything else because it's not relevant to the, what's, what you're about to get into on the current request. Uh, but it's a reminder that we need to all collectively make sure we're talking about the subject that's really in front of us rather than the interesting one that we got into. Uh, is, did you want to add to that, Bruce, any more? No, okay. no, I think that sums it up. All right. Um, so now under new business, we have in front of us uh, an application to hear the appeal of William and Kelly Lewandowski, 11 Wombeck Road, Tax map U12, lot 77, for a rear property line variance of 19 feet from the required 30 and a front property line variance of 12 feet from the required 30 
to replace the existing structure, enlarge the footprint, and add a second floor. Uh, and uh, now let's look at Mike Hill's letter, if we could, before we get into the details of this application. Uh, just to see if anybody has any questions about it. Uh, there's Bruce's letter on top to Mike, which sums up the question that we thought we were asking. Uh, and basically, Mike came back with his letter of December 14th, uh, which tracked through the problem. Uh, and basically said what the applicant is requesting in the present case is twofold. He is requesting to reconstruct a non-conforming structure and also enlarge it. The enlargement is governed by section 19.3-4B2. That section states that any enlargement shall not increase the height of that part of the building within the required district setback. So we were all right as far as it went. Uh, but that's not the real question. <laughs> uh, a fair reading of that section in its entirety would require an applicant to seek a variance, which Mr. Lewandowski had done and is doing tonight. So that, again, confirms how we got from one problem to the other. Anybody have any questions just on the process question before we plunge into the application? So to bring it back on point, what we're looking at is a variance in which the issue of hardship arises and all the other criteria for a variance, which appear on page uh, 43 under uh, section 19.5-2-B, 5-2-B. Uh, and I'll ask the applicant to uh, make his presentation, please. Uh, the second thing to note here, as I'm sure he will point out, is that there have been some changes, <laughs> as Bruce pointed out, as a result of his survey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, indeed, there have been some changes. I've tried, uh, despite all of our insight, to simplify uh, our request for variance. And I guess it's perhaps most easily noted where, or what we're trying to accomplish, and as the board, is on the survey sheet, which is about in the middle of the group of paperwork, there is the uh, <coughs> survey by the surveyors. I've highlighted the area in yellow to show the increase in the square footage. Uh, the increase in square footage takes place between the existing garage and the main structure of the house. It also increases toward the street five additional feet. Other than those two areas, the structure is, footprint is not increased, but we are going up a second story. The set, the variance is uh, therefore one of, uh, I'm seeking a front and a rear setback uh, variance from the standard, which is 30 feet in, in both instances. I then went to an architect to clarify the look and the type of structure, because I feel that's important so the board realizes what indeed is being built and how it may look. And you can find that in the first section again, of the group of paperwork, elevations uh, as drawn. There is also an internal first floor plan, and following that, a, a second floor plan. Again, the first and second floor plans are not unlike what's there now, with the exception of the five-foot increase toward the road. The garage 
uh, is existing, and again, the area is uh, being built, essentially a larger garage going toward the structure of the main house, but is not, is not living area. Um, I've also, to make it easier, have four color snapshots toward the end of the paperwork showing various views of the structure in relation to neighboring houses, in relation to the property line, and an interior shot of the structure itself showing the log walls. And the reason for the uh, demolition of the structure in that the logs will not support a second floor. I, I think it's important that the council or the board realizes that this was a camp built in approximately 1947 and perhaps was one of the first houses in Shore Acres and over the years more substantial structures have sprung up to fill the neighborhood this perhaps being almost the last structure to be modified or brought up, if possible, to levels comparable with the surrounding neighbors. Uh, without knowing the neighborhood entirely, I feel is, is perhaps the smallest structure in Shore Acres. Shore Acres is comprised of about 150 residences. Um, this one undoubtedly probably the smallest. Um, and again, we are appealing to the board due to the hardship uh, which we're facing after two years of residing in the structure. But at this point, I'd be happy to answer any questions or give any other insight into our request. Uh, I just want to be clear. It's my understanding, looking at last month's application that we just with that was just withdrawn, and the current application. Uh, at the last time, you indicated that the setback is 20 feet, and uh, the house was within that 20 feet for the rear setback. The current application says the setback is 30 feet in that zone and the, the, the house is in fact 11 feet <coughs> three inches. The, the setbacks according to the code in an RA zone is 30 feet, uh, both rear, front, and side. Now I'm infringing on that, or the current structure is, both in the rear and in the front. But the standard setback uh, is indeed 30 feet. Uh, despite the reading of the notation of the 20 feet in the first application. Okay. So that was an error. And that's that was an error, correct. Uh, and it's the survey that you had done recently since the last time that resulted in the squeezing down. That the survey at this point uh, defines exactly, uh, if you will, to the inch or to the closest reading possible, exactly where the structure sits in relation to the uh, property lines. Confirming again your wisdom, Mr. Fristachi, in bringing that issue up some months ago. Uh, did, did you want to insert something, Bruce? Or? I, I just wanted to let the board know that the, 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 you may be questioning the side setback of 28 feet. Um, the, the reason why he doesn't need a variance on that side is because the ordinance does allow a 25-foot setback to the side, um, providing they don't occupy more than 25% of the, of, the, of the lot area by buildings. And he falls into that category, and, and therefore, he didn't need a variance on that side. So what's the reference on that, Bruce? What's that? Where's that, that provision referred to? Page 30. 
Thank you. Well, it starts over on developed non-conforming lots on page 31, and it refers back to the chart on page 30. Um, I'm sorry. Rear setback is 20 <coughs> So you were right originally that the rear said no, no. If he's going for variance, he's got to. You got to ask for variance from the required setbacks, not the reduced setbacks that you could take advantage of. That's where the Without confusion the variance, lies. Right. You still got to for the variance. You got to go back to the what the required setbacks would was originally, and that's that's why there's always a confusion on this. Okay. Um, but I always play it safe and go back to the required because if you don't, that can be confusing in, in, in later years okay uh, mr. mr chairman yeah let me yeah. just i need one more question and i'll okay. be glad to turn it over just because i'm not clear about something you said earlier uh the it's my understanding you intend to use the existing foundation yes to what how, to how are you dealing then with the additional uh uh footage that you're putting on the front is that just second floor only or no, the addition, there would in, involve uh, an increase in the foundation toward the street by five feet. It would, okay. Correct. No, I'm sorry, where was first? Tom? Yeah. Uh, are there any specific circumstances that you can point to that have uh, changed in the almost two years that you bought it that have created the hardship that weren't there when you bought it? No, uh, good point. We bought it because we liked the neighborhood. We were downsizing, um, and indeed we did downsize. Uh, it was cozy, but cozy gets small after a while. Uh, at that time, our son was younger. Uh, he's grown. Uh, there's, uh, it's basically three rooms. It's 800 square feet. And we always thought it was possible to expand the structure and go up, not knowing uh, the procedure which one does that, uh, hence we're here tonight. But it has just become uh, uncomfortably too small for three. We don't plan to increase our family size, but uh, one bedroom, one bath is, is not only a difficulty, but a hardship. Uh, How old is your son? He's six. Did you have other questions? No. Anybody else have questions for Mr. Lewandowski? Joe? I have a question. I need some clarifications on these setbacks. Specifically, what is the rear of the property? Is that the 11.3 right now that you're showing us on the, map, on the uh, survey? Yes, Mr. Fustashi, 11 feet, 3 inches is from the existing structure to the rear property okay, line. So that's the rear. And you're asking for a variance to go to 11 feet. It may be 0. 0.3 feet, but you're asking for an increase in, well, the, in the rear setback. Well, I went, took 3 off just because the building may overhang or a new eave. But that, that constitutes, the way I interpret this, as an increase in the um, non-conformability of the lot. You're, you're increasing the non-conformity of the lot. All right. I, I believe that does not apply to a variance. That does not apply to I a variance. Believe that, and the reason why I put the legal interpretation, which I just found today, in the ordinance, yeah. I mean, in the town, in the town uh, book that comes out from, from the Maine Municipal Association, that although this specifically talks about that situation with an ordinance that specifically spells out um, um, criteria in the ordinance that says under, under a variance that the building cannot be more non-conforming, our, ordin our ordinance only, only mentions that in the enlargement replacement section and not in the variance section. So had, if he was applying for an enlargement replacement, then yes, I believe this interpretation applies because that's where it says it. But it does not say it under, it doesn't say it in the ordinance 
under a variance. Okay, so we're scrapping what we talked about last month. And this is, this is new, the new deal, basically. What we talked about, a replacement, enlargement, reconstruction, is out the board. It and, never and was what, in the door. That's what I was from, from... Okay, well, I was confused because I thought that that's what we were doing. We're taking, we're taking a non We never should get into that conversation last week because he applied for okay. a variance, not okay. an enlargement. But we, still have, but we still have a non-conforming lot. That's correct. With a non-conforming building. That's correct. And we're going to tear it down, but the foundation is going to stay there. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. <coughs> but we're going to increase the non-conformity by three inch, by th uh, four inches. How are we going to do that? But the ordinance does not, what I'm saying, under a variance, the ordinance does not disallow you, the board, to grant a variance increasing the nonconformity. The only place in the ordinance that talks about not being able to increase its nonconformity is under the enlargement replacement okay. criteria, which he's not applying under. Okay. So we can, we can tear this down and we can put a second story on this now? That's, that's what we're discussing? Yes. We can increase the height of this? Yes. With a variance. You can allow a variance. Okay. Uh, There's nowhere in the ordinances that say that, 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 that the non, under a variance that a nonconformance cannot be increased. All right. Only under an enlargement replacement okay. situation does it say that. All right. To the chairman, it took you three phone calls to get that straight? I'm still not straight. <laughs> You're still not straight. <laughs> It is confusing, so we don't have to worry about the setbacks, what, what it is now, and what he's requesting. We, don't, we do not have to consider the 11.3. We just have to consider what he wants to go down to. He could be at to. 3 feet from 11 feet, if he cho so chose, under a variance. And the board could auth authorize under, that, under a variance, but not under the enlargement reconstruction situation, replacement. Well, it, that's thank you for the clarification. I'm, I'm clear on it now, so I'll put that... Put that aside and listen to the. <laughs> listen to some more. Other questions. Uh, I, just before we leave it, I want to be clear that the issue of the setbacks, in terms of the way it may affect individual board members thinking about the variance, is certainly relevant. But it's not a decision that has to be made in and of itself. Well, so I'm going to go back to what Bruce has said for the ever since I. He's been sitting in that chair. Is, uh, I guess we'll have to consider the, this lot as nothing on it now. And uh, he's coming in with this vacant lot with a request to put a structure on this lot. We're, we're looking at this as if there's nothing there. And he's asking us to put this new building on it. Now, is that a... It's, no, it's probably no different than, 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 than that situation. Except that if you're going to evaluate the question of hardship, the fact that there's an existing house there and a foundation and so on seems to me to be a relevant issue. How, how you see it is another matter, but it's a relevant issue to think about. Um, other board members that have questions for Mr. Lewandowski, or Mr. Smith for that matter. <laughs> yeah, I have a question for Mr. Smith. Uh, I'm looking, reading on page 32. It says the zoning board may, uh, appeals may upon written appeal, zoning board appeals may upon written appeal grant a further reduction in the side of real setbacks if it finds the reduction is consistent. Now, I know he's not applying for that, but uh, regarding Mr. Fustachi's questions about the, uh, about the 11 feet, 11 feet 3, but it says that we can we do further reduce the side and rear setbacks, but not the front <coughs> setback. And I guess my question is, uh, this is a lower standard than the variance, right? I in so, some and ways. the only reason that uh, we have apply for variance is because of, of the front setbacks. In other words, he could th increase the height of this non-conforming structure on the side and rear setbacks under uh, page 32. Not a cotton. No, because that would be an enlargement, <laughs> and you can't do that without a variance, <coughs> which is what got us into That's this mess in the first place. That's what basically says. <clears throat> Say that again. That would be an enlargement, and, you, and according to Mike Hill's letter and the ordinance, you can't have an enlargement in this circumstance without applying for a variance, which is what it we're doing It specifically here. says any enlargement shall not increase the height of that part of the building within the required district setback. <clears throat> and by going up to the second floor, he is increasing the height within, the, within that district setback. 
And it was this track we started going down at the last meeting that got us, you know, off okay. off the subject, which. Uh, Sorry, I, yeah, I, I thought the the, the following the pa paragraph following the any enlargement sentence was a modification of that. This ordinance is unique in, in, in that uh, you can get there more than one way. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> or you can get lost along can the way. As a variance, then, then all of these other constraints go out the window, right? Okay. I guess there's no other questions for you, Mr. Levinowski. Did you want to say something else, sir? No, at, not at this point. I, uh, Despite, the again, the insights into how it's all worded, worded, I hope through my second application, I have somehow simplified our requests and I'm simply filling in the area between the garage and now moving a request forward. But uh, I guess I do have another question. Uh, come think of it. Since you're starting basically from scratch, although you have to work within some limitations uh, in terms of the foundation, uh, why didn't you choose to get the additional square footage by pushing out into the yard in the other direction away from the garage so that you were heading a place where you have plenty of uh, setback room. I thought it maintained a smaller scale by keeping a small L rather than creating a, a box. If I move the house forward to fill in that L or that notch, the structure becomes very boxy. Uh, and it also starts approaching the slope of the hill, the, fr the front yard slopes toward Pilot Point Road. And I just felt it, it was more in keeping with a small cottage style house to maintain the small L shape as opposed to creating a, a square box, particularly if in consideration a second floor was being added. I felt it seemed more diminutive. It still got us what we wanted, a second floor. I didn't have to get into a lot of foundation work, although that, that was really secondary. <coughs> um, when you say diminutive, you mean in the sense of the impact on, on the lot and the surrounding yeah, area? Yeah, I just felt it was more quaint. If one looks at the picture now, you can see the, uh, the small L-shape area, particularly the upper left photograph. And to fill in uh, and, and make it a, a square, uh, I, it, it, it made it cumbersome on the lot and, uh, and not as, I don't think, as appropriate and it's simply uh, just says that. As great deal was given a th thought here, I had the architect come look at it. We really wanted to keep the impact minimal. Uh, this will turn out to be a 2,000, actually a 2,100 square foot of heated space of residents. Uh, it's currently 1,000, uh, 800, 200 is a porch, which isn't heated, 800. So we're simply going up over the existing foundation with the exception of the five foot increase toward the street. Just because we're, we're still desperate for space. Um, was, it, was it, or is it my understanding that it was a concern of your, your neighbor that that not to go back towards Pilot Point because wasn't she concerned that that was an issue with her or not? If I get that right. Actually, uh, Bruce, you indeed did talk to her, uh, one of my abutters, and I think from what I understand through a pre uh, subsequent conversation with her, you alleviated her concerns. Uh, but absolutely, there again, uh, the impact was kept to a minimum by increasing it as proposed as opposed to increasing in an area which would not be non-conforming or which would be conforming. Uh, so it, 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 it appeased, appeased her, I'm sure. Uh, there is a letter at the back from my other neighbor and he addresses uh, his non-objection, if you will, with the current plan. Just for the record, that letter is from Andrew Ingalls, who's at uh, 9 Wombeck Road. He is, and as he states in his letter, he is on the garage side uh, of my, our structure. 
And really, has the most to gain or lose by the increase in, in, in the height, because we are between him and the, uh, and the water. Although he has no water views over our structure currently, it's through another area. But he does state uh, in the letter uh, his approval as, the, as it stands uh, with the existing uh, enlargement. Thank you, Mr. Lomonowski. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this application, either for or against? If not, the public hearing is closed and uh, it's on the floor for a discussion or a motion. Uh, incidentally, there was no draft order in your packet, and I asked Bruce to provide one. It was in that uh, package that was laying on your desk, <coughs> along with uh, this new copy of our membership list, which I did uh, put that in your folder so you know who to harass. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make the I'll make the motion if so, unless somebody else would like to do it. I've sort of been doing this lately. Uh, can I say something before you make your motion? Yeah, we're going to have to have a New Year's resolution here to get more people making motions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to make. Can I make a couple comments before you? Oh yeah, go ahead. Um, Tom alluded to something earlier about the land in question um, or the hardship. And uh, of the uh, four items that we have to consider, I've got a problem with two of them. Um, I believe the land in question can yield a reasonable return uh, if the variance is not granted. And the fourth item is the hardship is, is definitely a result of the action taken by the applicant because his intention is to tear this down and rebuild. There's a, there's a structure there that he just purchased a couple of years ago and, um, um, you know, it, it's hard for me to be convinced right now um, that there is a hardship. No, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that someone can convince me. No, the, the public hearing is closed, so we'll have to leave this to the board now. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Tom. Uh, as far as number four goes, uh, I'm not sure that the fact that he wants to expand applies because that's what you people ask for a variance when they want to expand. Uh, and therefore, number four would never be met. Um, I don't think that's what's meant by the result of action taken by the applicant. Well. It, this is a unique situation. This is the first one that I've experienced in the what, two years plus that I've been on the board. Uh, he's going to tear the building down. I mean, he's going to create uh, a situation. Uh, it was just discussed. I think the last item was discussed that there are or there is an alternative way to add space to the building uh, without the variance, uh, without increasing the nonconformity. Um, so I mean, there there are alternatives, mm -hmm. but but even still, uh, I mean, I. Um, no, not to argue the substance of your point, but just just to say that, as a procedural matter, I'm not sure that's true. Uh, I mean, yes, he would not have a setback problem if he moved toward Pilot Point Road, but because it's an enlargement and he's an existing facility is closer, is non-conforming. For setback, would he not still have the same? Well, I think we ought to clarify that the, yeah. the, the, the point three inches or whatever it is that, that I advertised that and rounded it to that 19 feet on a rear because it is a class D survey and it may or may not be necessarily as accurate as it, as it, as it should be. Realizing that the existing footprint is already there and that the structure, if approved, could be built on an existing foundation so that it would not encroach further. It was as simple, as simple as advertising rounding down and giving a bit of benefit because a Class D survey isn't necessarily accurate. So I probably should take the blame for that. He's not going to go closer 
to the rear line if that's an issue. That's not an issue at this time. You, corrected, uh, uh, you, you clarified that uh, okay. well, 15, but, but 20 minutes. Brought that up that the three, the no, three that's not the issue. I'm talking the hardship right now. Okay. I'm not talking the setbacks, nothing. Well, I just mm. heard you say that again, so I, I just mm. needed to clarify. No, I didn't mention anything about the setbacks. I'm talking the hardship, and I'm not convinced that there's a hardship here. Am I alone? I guess all I was saying, just to finish that off, is that it would be my understanding of the situation we're in that even if the proposal were to move, to create the additional square footage by uh, moving toward Pilot Point Road, as I was suggesting in my previous question <coughs> to the applicant, uh, he would still require variance because it's still non conforming and it's still enlarging. So he would still be in the question, uh, in the situation where you would have to evaluate hardship and impact based on, on that enlargement. So, uh, but that's not, I'm not speaking at all to your substantive question, which is a legitimate one. Well, I, I think the hardship here is, as you explained, that as his family grows older, the walls seem to be moving in. I, I don't know, you can think what you will of that as, as a hardship. Um, I don't think that's, I guess he's got a family, so he created that situation himself. I don't think a building is creating uh, a hardship as a result of your own action, because that's what you always seek a variance for. Uh, otherwise, you'd never be able to get it. First question is, is one that I think there's a little more question about. Uh, I'm not sure the answer to that one. Why don't we get a motion on the table, and then we can dig in more, a little more deeply, uh, since we're getting down to it here. Amir, do you want to follow through? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll follow through. I'll, I'll have some trouble when we get to the conclusion. Uh, well, you make the motion the way you want to make the motion, and then no, we'll I, deal with it. Okay. Well, uh, move the approval of the uh, William and Kelly Lewandowski uh, application for a variance from the step strict application of the zoning ordinance. Uh, requirement of section 1961 uh, held uh, today. The applicant seeks a rear property line <coughs> variance of 19.0, uh, 19 feet 0 inches from the required 30 feet 0 inches and a front property line variance of 12 feet from the required 30 feet to replace the existing structure, enlarge the footprint and add a second floor. The finding of facts, one, the appellants are the owners of a property at 11 Wombach Road, which is in the residential A district, tax map U, 12, lot 77, containing 13,826 square feet. The conclusions, one through four, uh, <clears throat> it's, I guess I have to read them in this particular case. Uh, the land in question, uh, cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. The need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general neighborhood, conditions in the neighborhood. The granting of a variance will not alter the essential character of the locality and the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. That's your motion. Second. That's my motion. And motion made and second. Now open for discussion. Well, I was just going to say, relative to the to the first question, the the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. It can, I I think, yield a reasonable return if the variance is not granted. But if it's sold, the next purchaser will be before us again with the same issue. This is, this is a unique property. Um, so that, that is that kind of a question that can be answered that way. Uh, it's it's going to come right back at us again, I'm sure, relative to that. But the answer to that question is that it can, in my mind. Mr. Chairman, may, huh? I, may I have just followed up by asking, uh, when you say it's a unique property, do you view it that way because um, it's the smallest property by oh, far in the area? Yes, of its, of its location, proximity to the ocean. So one could interpret that to be an unreasonable return 
for the neighborhood? Say if they got what they paid for two years ago? That, I'm sure they could. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be reasonable? They're not losing, not losing any money. I think if somebody wanted to <coughs> buy this property and, and, and build a, a conforming house on it, that they would have to, the value of the existing house would be basically zero because you would have to tear it down. It's so small. Uh, I mean, who would buy this very expensive property? They'd have to, uh, with, with this house on it. So I say, well, the property is diminished by the value that it would take to tear the house down and rebuild it. You see what I mean? So if the value of the, of, of the land is diminished by the house that's on it now, and the house is so small that you can't do anything with <coughs> the 800 square feet, that you have to tear it down and re rebuild an entire new house on, on another foundation <coughs> which met setbacks, then the value of the land is unreasonably, to me, diminished by, by that constraint. And if you can make the house conforming to something approaching what is characteristic of the neighborhood with minimal, what I call, de minimis impact upon the setbacks, then I think that I can, I can in my own mind, come to terms with this, unlike some things which I voted for and some things I voted against over there. This, to me, is such a minimal uh, impact on, on the setbacks that I, I see it as consistent with the board's policy to, to grant a variance for something, this minimal impact, when so much of the value of the, of the property with the house on it will be increased by the granting of this variance. But I could be convinced otherwise. Well, my through the chair. I have another concern that in granting a variance or granting permission to tear this down and build, are we going to be setting a precedent for other, other people in the future coming in buying uh, lower priced properties with a magnificent view on a substandard lot and, and basically wanting to do the same thing, tear it down and rebuild? There's a lot of that going on in Cape Elizabeth. On, on larger lots. Yeah, I think we've already done that. That's, we, we had the house in Delano Park where we went up two stories, right? Well, this is, this is another concern that I have and, you know, for discussion. Yeah. But what's the, somebody who, who had more financial resources would say, let's tear down the whole house completely and then we'll build a, a two-story house within, uh, I think you could do that with the allowable setbacks, given all this land you have to the southeast. But what is the size of the lot, Bruce? Thirteen thousand. Thirteen thousand. I somehow missed that. Here. I don't see it in the it's application. On your draft order. <coughs> uh, the findings of that. Yeah. And mm, thirteen eight two six. I'm it, sorry. I mean, a, a house would fit on this lot, wouldn't it? It would be twenty feet wide, but mm. it would fit. It's an 80-foot lot, 30 feet from front and back, and there's certainly enough 160, 182-foot uh, rear property line that would fit. I think you only have to go back 20 feet on the on the back, and it's not 25 30. on the front. I think. I believe a 35-foot wide house. But I think that Mr. Lewandowski has put together a, <clears throat> a house which has tried to accommodate a couple of different things. One, not to radically change, and, and this is perhaps emotional, not to radically change the, the house that he's got there at the present time, uh, not to impact too negatively on neighbors, and secondarily, going forward, it might be pretty expensive by, compared to what he's going to do now. I mean, it appears to me that the, from, from what we are hearing, and we have to believe that, that the, uh, the existing house is not a very substantial structure. And I certainly can imagine, <clears throat> if Mr. Lewandowski said it, Mrs. probably did, gee, honey, let's buy it, we'll fix it up later. I mean, heck, that's gonna happen. And I, and I think that this is what's gonna happen, uh, as, as Glenn suggested a bit ago, the next person if they say to heck with them, it's going to come back. Somebody is going to want to increase it. Maybe they'll go down forward. But at this point, I, uh, I, can, I can understand some of what's being said, but uh, I, I personally don't see a reasonable uh, return being 
gained, and I would suspect that uh, if you had somebody go in and analyze it, a uh, real estate guy, an appraiser, they'd have a hell of a time trying to uh, come up with a suitable price that would be attractive, unless it was torn down and somebody built up again like they're doing with the old Betty Davis house. And he doesn't have a carriage house to move into and remodel prior to building this one. <laughs> It's got a garage, though. <laughs> uh, Bruce, somebody said something earlier, and just I'd appreciate your comment on it. If if somebody came in, <clears throat> forgetting whether it's Mr. Lewandowski or some other purchaser, and in effect tore down the house and started with this as a new lot, an empty lot, uh, what would be the limitations in that district? It, it would depend if they if they weren't going to occupy more than 25 percent of the lot by buildings, then it would be 25, 20, and 25 for setbacks. Set. Otherwise, it's third. <clears throat> so basically, it could be done on that lot, but it would be a long, narrow house. Trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you could get in that situation. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> You'd get a 30-foot wide house on it. Mm. Yeah, you could. A, a single-story 30-foot wide house. No, you could have a two-story house on that. Yeah. Right. 30 by whatever you want, 40. Well, yeah, Bruce, is that enlargement should all decrease the height of the building. That's, that's it. The board, the board has to reduce, yeah, further right. reduce. Yeah. <coughs> um. Personally, I'm, I'm having a real struggle with this one I, uh, because I realize that there is concern that we not be establishing precedents in situations where uh, s such that the concept of a variance becomes uh, a giveaway and en entices other people to come in and apply for it because we do have a lot of small lots and a lot of small homes, some of them nearer to the water than this one. Uh, where that might come about. On the other hand, uh, not only do I th think Mr. Cronin's comments are at least one reasonable assessment of the reasonable return issue, um, but on top of that, I want to look at this from the standpoint of what's best for the town on that lot, and one of two things is going to happen, either that small house in its current condition or some replacement for it way down the road, if that happens, uh, will be there. Or uh, someone will try to create a new house with the limitations we were talking about a minute ago, which from my point of view are more intrusive on the lot and thus to the area and the neighbors than the proposal before us. And uh, so for that reason, I. <laughs> I think if I can accept the hardship question, which I can, uh, then the best interest of the town lies with uh, allowing this approach to be taken and uh, minimizing the uh, intrusive impact on the lot, and uh, which, because it's a corner lot, has a more serious impact on the, on the area than uh, some others might. Uh, so it would be my inclination to vote for the proposal that's in front of us. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, it, I, uh, I, I feel that there's been good arguments put forth on why there cannot be a reasonable return, but I wanted to address the uh, issue of precedent. Um, one of the first things you learn your first year of law school is that every piece of property is unique. Uh, you, you can't repeat any piece of property. And as a result, I think that worrying about precedent um, in our situation, uh, perhaps unlike a court of laws, is a little overrated because every time we look at a piece of property, it's going to be unique. There's, there's really no direct precedent to examining a piece of property because each one is different. Uh, so I mean, I think that we're looking at this in the context of this piece of property, this neighborhood, where it's situated on earth. 
uh, and the next one that comes before us may be similar, but it's, it's always going to be different enough that, that different circumstances will be presented to us. So I, I personally would, would urge that um, precedent in this context is, is a little, uh, shouldn't be a great concern of ours. <clears throat> it's always good to have a lawyer on the board. <laughs> Uh, you can look at that both ways. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, but I, I like to treat people by the same principles. Uh, and I don't like to distinguish if somebody's making a grandiose addition to a house. Hold on just a second, Bob. We got a tape change here. <coughs> I, hate, I hate to stop you in mid. I got a head of steam up. You're on a roll. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. The precedents, the precedents we've set in, 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 in looking backwards in modest additions, and maybe the Delano Park addition wasn't a great addition. This is a, a house in Delano Park that we voted to allow a variance on. Uh, was a good deal less modest than this addition. Uh, and uh, if the board feels that that was adequate, and then we also had the house on the Mitchell Road, which I voted for, uh, and which is even a, a, a less modest addition than this one. So consistent with what we've done in the past, uh, I think modest additions we've we've sort of looked at and said, well, what's best for the neighborhood? What are the alternatives? And uh, the homeowner will want to impoverish him from trying to rotate his house 90 degrees uh, uh, to make it conform. Then I say, well, yeah, I, I think that we can look at the variant the variance criteria in terms of uh, the impact on the environment and the, the spirit of, of the zoning ordinances. So in that, in terms of that, I, I, I appreciate the variant, the precedents we've set, so to speak, and I think that's consistent with what we've treated, how we've treated people in the past. Any other discussion? Ready for a vote? If so, the motion is to uh, approve the uh, variance request from William and Kelly Lewandowski, uh, and all those in favor, raise your hand. <clears throat> Three of those opposed. One opposed, Mr. Bickford. Variance is approved. You can invite us to the housewarming. <laughs> Happy New Year. There's, uh, if the board will stick with me, there's a couple of other issues we'd like to talk about, uh, administrative matters. Um, First of all, if you got to the bottom of your packet, there was, I, I had sent you a letter, and then there was also a copy of a letter uh, sent to each of the new board members uh, who will be joining us in January. Uh, one of them, Jack Keneally, is in the audience and has um, introduced himself. The other, Ann Elderkin, uh, is a relatively new arrival in town. She's the director of the uh, health division, I guess it's called, for the city of Portland. and. Uh, has extensive experience in city government in Massachusetts, and I'm sure will make an excellent addition to the board. Um, and they will be joining us at the next meeting. Um, the next meeting creates a bit of a problem. I, I said in my letter to you and to the new members that I wanted to uh, reenact the uh, second annual pizza party because I thought it was both fun and useful, and I like pizza when somebody else is paying for it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I thought the, the meeting in January would be the right time to do that, given new members and a chance to meet with Mike Hill and uh, get a briefing and ask some questions. Uh, after I sent that letter, in fact, just yesterday, Bruce uh, realized that he would not be here for that meeting. He's going to be in California. And uh, as a result, I'm a, I'm a little... Uh, taken aback as to how to deal with it. Uh, I understand that Mike Hill is willing to come on that date, but less comfortable with Bruce not being here, and I think that's a legitimate uh, concern. Uh, so I just wanted to mention the problem to the board and see how you feel about it, because we've got two competing interests, one to do the meeting, welcome the new members, and get started on the right foot, and the other staff not being available. and. Uh, 
perhaps therefore the meeting being less fruitful. So before I make a decision on what to do about it, I wanted to offer you the opportunity to <coughs> chime in. Uh, will we meet on the third Tuesday of every month? Yeah. We meet on the fourth Tuesday uh, routinely, so that meeting is the 26th, and uh, the next meeting in February would be the 23rd. So from my point of view, there's three options, perhaps, uh, two of them I'm sure of. One is do without the uh, staff at that meeting and go ahead and have it in January. The other is postpone it for a month with the downside that provides, and it's a trade-off. And the third is change the meeting date, and I'm not sure whether that's doable or not. It's in our charter, I believe, our rules, that we meet on the fourth well, I think it would be a Tuesday, but the meeting we, date at this, this, at this point. Uh, yeah. Those applicants, uh, people have questioned that date. Yeah. We have and unfortunately, there isn't a fifth Tuesday in the month that we could fall back to as we did this time. So, uh, Amory. I, I would propose we post postpone the pizza for the following month and just go with what uh, we may not have an agenda of any major proportions that night. It's unknown at the moment, I guess, yeah. what we'll have on the agenda. And, and yeah. you know, I don't like having a meeting without the staff here. I think the discussions we had tonight, a lot of questions for Bruce and, and uh, that's common, so I don't like it, but we have to live with it. Um, anybody else have any comments uh, different than Amory's? Okay. Uh, I guess I am inclined to agree with Amory, so in, in the absence of any negative comments, uh, do you have any feelings one way or the other, Jack? You're the, one of the new members that's being welcomed. Okay. Uh, then we will postpone the meeting with Mike Hill and the uh, pizza till the February 23rd meeting. And uh, I would ask each of you to make an effort to be there at the appointed time, which is 5.30, because I'm trying to squeeze a lot into a brief time and then have the meeting start on time at 7. Uh, so I think that's all. Oh, you have any other items, Bruce, we ought to be talking about? I don't. Okay. Are you planning a January 26th meeting? There will be a January 26th meeting unless there's no agenda items in front of us, and I got the impression from your comment that we do have well, applicants. We have, we have potential. Okay. One potential. At the moment, we don't know. It's still two weeks away from the deadline date. So, so uh, But I will review the application and make any comments that I feel that the board needs. Okay. Um, Let me suggest this if you can, Bruce. I know you've done this once before, as I recall. I can't remember what occasioned it at the time. It was more than a year ago, or a year ago. Uh, and that was to, uh, well, it was last December. It was last Christmas time, and we were trying to avoid having a meeting because it was like Christmas Eve or something. And you were able to convince an applicant that being Grinch would not perhaps be a good idea if they wanted a favorable answer. I don't know how you put it, but uh, so the question, and I don't mean obviously to put it that way except in humor, but, do that. but if there's any possibility that an applicant uh, could wait until February without seriously affecting their, uh, their process, we would appreciate it. And uh, if, but if we have one item on the agenda, we might just as well go ahead and have the meeting. So, so whatever you come up with, we will soldier through it. If there's nothing else to come before the board, the meeting's adjourned. Thank you all, and Happy New Year. <coughs> and point of information, what's the status of these draft technical amendments to the zoning ordinances? Bruce, what's the status of these things, these uh, draft technical amendments?